Hello everyone, my name is James Simo and I'm going to show you how you can take Figma designs like this and put them into Babylon JS like this without uh, pretty much any code and just using a Figma plugin. So to get started, uh, I'm going to assume you already have a UI designed in Figma. Just to show you some concepts, uh, we can have gradients here, text, you can see this little icon here I designed, again, it's just SVG with gradients and a text overlay on top of it. It can be whatever you want though, really. The background fill can be pretty much anything you want. I've got it gray, but you know, I can make it like black or whatever. And I can decide if I should include this in the Figma export or not. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm just going to put like, I'll put like a little box in the middle just to kind of show you guys. Imagine this is a crosshair or something. Probably better if I design it like a circle. Just to, just imagine like a little crosshair in the middle there. Okay, now before I show you how to export this, it's important that we name things correctly because what's going to happen is when I export this to Babylon JS, all of the layer names will transfer over into the Babylon JS JSON structure. So when you want to call things in code, it's nicer if I can actually name, if I can actually refer to things properly. So, you know, it's ellipses two. I should just call this like cross hair or something. Let's make it a bit of a, let's make it a bit of a, a cool color. Let's give it like a hot green. And of course, anything can actually have shadows or glows applied to it. You can kind of see everything. He has like a sloughed gradient and a glow to it. Um, here you go, I got gradient ball here. The gradient ball is just to demo what a ball might look like. And uh, let me show you then how to get the plugin. So there's a few ways you can do it. Either you go to your community tab on Figma. Uh, you can drop down here and get it via there, say community, and then search Figma 2 Babylon JS. And there you go, I should be the first result there. I uh, I haven't seen anything else with Babylon JS and Figma, so I'm probably the only result. Uh, you can find it there, click on it, and there you go. There'll be a try it out button, and that's how you get it onto your system. You could also just right click on the frame itself, go to plugins. Uh, I already have Figma to Babylon JS here, but if I go to find more for you, it'd be find more plugins. Again, I already have it here, but just Figma to Babylon JS. Yeah, so I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to say run. And now it should be in your plugins drop down. There you go. See, I have Figma to Babylon JS here. I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on the frame I want to export. And remember that right now, whatever the width and height is, that will be the width and height of the texture that Babylon JS produces. Here we go. So I have my this is the uh, convert to Babylon JS plugin. There's a few things. Number one, there's a toggle for background color. Again, that just says if I want to take this gray background in with the export or not. I don't want to because as you can see, this is kind of like a HUD for a game. So I don't want any like anything blocking the actual game behind it. And um, button code is a new feature I've added. What that allows you to do is let's say this pause here is obviously a button, right? Well, by default, I've made it to dash BJS. And what that means is anywhere on the layer name, I can actually put dash BJS. Uh, and you could make this a custom code yourself if you wanted to. BJS like Babylon JS. And what that means now is when I export this, this will be exported actually as a button, a Babylon JS button control instead of a rectangle. So I'm going to say convert to Babylon. Oh, wait, uh, again, make sure I'm selected on the HUD that I want to export. Sorry, let me do that properly. Right click. Figma to Babylon JS. Uh, it takes a second to load up, and there we go. I'm going to say convert, or tap convert, I should say. All right, and then it's going to ask you where to put it. I already have a folder here, but realistically, you should actually put it into your into your game directory where you'd want to store all of these. Um, so I'm, I'm going to put it here for now, though. Save, and I'm replacing it because I already had a copy. All right, now what has happened if I go to that file? Okay, so this is what's being produced. Uh, it doesn't look very readable right now, so I'm gonna quickly just um, format the document. There we go. 
Uh, you won't have to do this step, but I just want to show people what's going on in the background. So what's happened is now we have a JSON file which is going to tell Babylon JS that there is a root um, a root of the uh, full full screen texture, I believe it is, um, or an advanced dynamic texture. I, f I forgot the name, sorry. Um, and what that is is a container. And then inside of it is all the children of everything I've built. So let's see. There we go. I got my top gradient, which is a rectangle. Um, and I have, uh, and everything will be in here. Like I have my progress fill for the progress bars you saw. And, even, and it'll try to bring in all the fonts that I've used correctly. And everything should be in there. So what I'm going to do now is show you it in action. So I'm going to go to Safari. I'm going to open up the Babylon, the GUI.BabylonJS.com. Again, you wouldn't need to do this, but I'm, I just want to show you guys how it will look. So I'm going to say load uh, HUD.JSON. There we go. Now, it might look a bit strange here. That's only because gradients don't scale with how zoomed in you are in the editor. Um, but if you zoom in and out, you'll notice that the gradients change. That is normal. It's nothing broken. And to prove that, what I can do here is click on sidebar. I'm going to say load from snippet. Oh, sorry, cancel. I'm going to say save to snippet. Again, if you're working on your own game, you don't need to do this. You it doesn't have to go on the snippet server if you don't want it. I'm just doing it for demo purposes. There you go. I got my code here. I'm going to copy that, close. And here was my example I put earlier, but I'm going to now paste this in. So I've changed, um, just to show you guys quickly, uh, to load from the snippet server, you will make a advanced texture, which is an advanced dynamic texture, and it's full screen UI. And then I'm saying pass from snippet. Um, you could you can use, um, I believe it's just pass, and then pass in the JSON file, and it will just treat it the same way. Uh, I put the correct code in there, so I'm going to just resize this to about there. I'm going to say play. There we go, and there's new UI, and you can see the little crosshair I made. And something, and you'll notice that all the gradients look pretty, pretty, pretty accurate from how they looked in Figma. If I go over to Figma, there we go. You'll see everything looks pretty good. And this is a really nice way of quickly, rapidly prototyping UI uh, to build for Babylon JS. Uh, what I found myself doing was I was using the Babylon JS editor a lot. However, it gets very um, it's 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 not really designed for scale right now. It is still a beta. You can see the big beta there. So I'm sure it'll get better, but it's missing some things. Like I can't control Z to undo, which is very annoying. Um, and I realized that oh, Figma. I, I already designed in Figma, and Figma is great for design. So I just bring all that over. And what I normally like to do sometimes is if I'm rapidly prototyping some UI, and I don't want to spin up an entire an entire Babylon JS project locally to test. What I like to do is I get the inspector on, and then I go to my UI here, and you can just press the little pencil icon here, and it's going to open that up in a new tab here, and this is the UI again as seen on um, uh, on the snippet server. But now what I can do, I can actually just change things here, and they should automatically update over on the GUI on the um, playground link. So let's just, um, ah, can't, uh, see, it's just another little like annoyance. I can't actually, for some reason, I can't expand this out. I'm not sure why. Um, all right, well, let, you know, what? I'm just going to delete all of this. Let's just delete that just to show you it working. Um, and also delete the crosshair. And then when I go over, it's updated on the Babylon JS. And I just wanted to mention some other features that might not be immediately obvious from my demo. Uh, quickly, down if you look at the bottom right here, you'll see that the, this pause button here is actually a button. If I click on the button.bgs on the side, it is a button class. So you could actually interact with this via code later by using the get control or find control function in Babylon.js and just passing in its name. Here's button-bgs. And then you could attach an on-click callback to it. Something else uh, you might not notice from the design, but the missions up here, they I've no, you may notice that uh, this is inside of a frame. 
these items are in a frame which is an auto layout a horizontal um sorry vertical auto layout um which are spaced by 15 in between them um this translates over to babylon js in the form of a stack panel so you can see here on figma if i was to delete let's say the fine 10 gold coins everything just moves up naturally this is the same. So if I go over to Babylon JS, I'm going to open up the web editor. Uh, there's my find 10 gold coins. I'll click on the, there you go, find 10 gold coins, delete that. Again, moves up because the items here are a stack panel. That's the word that Babylon JS uses for a uh, an auto layout frame. And I hope that everyone uses this uh, plugin. It's a very, very useful way to quickly prototype UI, it's very nice to be able to edit things like gradients and have visual feedback. Another little quirk I should mention is that uh, you, you'll notice this uh, this red ball down here is most definitely a gradient. Um, however, you can't edit it in the web UI editor right now. The web UI editor has no concept of what a gradient is. Um, it will display it, um, but as you can see it's not there so it's very nice to be able to go edit that in figma and you then you can play around with it in figma so that's why i have this nice looking ball here again it's just a radial gradient with um just a clever radial gradient thank you very much uh please feel free to leave uh any bugs you may find report them to me either in this youtube video on the community page and i will leave a link to the uh, Babylon JS forums where I have a thread here uh, which talks about the plugin and you can follow the thread and I, I give um, updates to it in this thread so feel free to leave any feedbacks comments suggestions and yeah thank you very much for watching